In, in terms of the, the concept behind our whole production system here, um, our, our core philosophy is form should follow function. Um, and that's not just to do with the technology and design of the vehicles. We've also incorporated that into the design of the factory. And we, and we did that extensively for the production facility. And if you, if you can imagine, we're producing a car now about every 44, 45 minutes, uh, we're around 20, 22 cars per day going out. That is not what you would call high volume. For this business, it, it's a significant leap forward from where we were in, in 2005. But it's not, it's not kind of rapid fire OEM. So what we did was we took our core philosophies and fed that into the designer process and designer factory. And what we wanted to emphasize was um, craftsmanship, uh, human connection and attention to detail and almost to an obsessive level so so our kind of our core influences are you need to be courageous you have to be innovative you need to be able to cope with the relentless nature of, of the performance area that we work in but you've got to be obsessive you really have to kind of obsess about that detail so when you walk into our uh, production facility that's what will be the first impression of cleanliness order um, the science behind the manufacturing operational systems and factory 4.0 and big data that all sits in the background that's what helps us do what we do but it shouldn't be your first impression uh, your first impression should be that my car is built by humans who are master craftsmen that's that's the kind of lasting sentiment what we were able to incorporate and, and i've been recently asked that question is where does mclaren sit with big data and factory 4.0 is it's not in the forefront of our consciousness um, a lot of uh, organizations talk about how their machines are interconnected and and i've even questioned myself uh, am i actually am i on the pace here with with 4.0 and big data but when you pause and you think about the way that we use data in our business um, all of our line side uh, terminals where we would the cars um, you have to log on to that with your own personal ID you put the four digit six digit number in um, for the specific car and then I've got you locked into the station so I know that you worked on that station and in that system are all the information you need to make I think currently we have something like 10 million options that we can build the car in in any configuration and it's a single flexible assembly line so to be able to beam that information to that station. But it goes much further than that then is if we come up with a continuous improvement, that data can go to the engineer, it can be assessed, it can be assimilated, it can be fed back down. So I can change that on the next car. So our version of factory 4.0 and the use of big data all sits in the background. Um, in the production facility, the uh, main building is Wi-Fi enabled. Our critical fastenings are all done by wireless transducer in, in tools it's automatically captured. That's just the way that we do our business. It's not what I want to portray to a customer. What I want to portray is the attention to detail and craftsmanship. So on the surface, it doesn't look like it, but it sits there and it works really, really well for us. Um, and in this year, at the beginning of this year, we made a, a very bold step. We took our homegrown business development systems and business operational systems, pushed them to one side and replaced them with a fully integrated global network system now, which is, is, is kind of standard across the industry. And we are again, self-teaching ourselves of how do, we, how do we adapt the way that we do our business and the expansion now and our ability to extract performance from air Areas and target our problem solving we're already seeing great leaps forward in the overall performance and, and we made massive leaps last year in our output and, and when I say massive leaps last year we improved our output by over 100% yeah, we launched the second shift in three months. We recruited 225 people in about eight weeks. They were all trained. So, so these are not like 5% increments. These are like gargantuan steps. Um, that makes us uh, an, interesting, an interesting entity to deal with in the competitive world of, of supercars. Um, we, we have carved a niche out for ourselves now. In fact, we've carved a whole arena out for ourselves now um, where, you know, other companies that have been around for a very, very, very long time, like over 50, 60, 70 years, are now, are now kind of looking at what we've achieved in the last seven years. And to date, we've done something like 17 cars in seven years. Uh, we now have over 13,000 cars out with our customers. We're launching three brand new cars every year. And the story just keeps going. And 
uh, with the, there's no sign of that slowing down. Uh, we recently announced what we call Track 22, which is our business plan product portfolio through to 2022, which is another 16 cars. So within in basically a 10 year entity from 2011 to 2022, we'll output it something like well, 30, 28, 30 new cars. Um, we've got three complete layers now. Uh, so we have Sport Series, which you can see a great example behind here, the 570 Spider, the Super Series, and we've got the Ultimate Series, which for us is a technology statement. We don't do one every year, but when we come up with something significant, we'll fold that into an Ultimate Series car. And then we've been able to expand into kind of lateral planes. We've gone GT, Grand Tourer, and we've gone LT, which is a track focus version. And then we've also bolted in what we call GTR, which is purely a track only car. So we've now got a really good product portfolio. Um, and one of the reasons I, I changed from operations to infrastructure around about March of this year um, was the question that we raised internally is, do we have the same level of capability in our facilities and infrastructure of, as we've got in our product por por portfolio plan? Um, so that's what I've been doing now. So we're just coming up with our whole business footprint strategy and, and where should we be? What should we be doing? How far up the value chain should we go? Um, so that we can maintain the momentum and pace of what we've been doing.